pleasure to have you with us still on the breakfast. Uh, we're still serving and now we're looking at World Pneumonia Day. Yes, uh, of course, it's to talk about a problem that seems to be ignored a lot across Nigeria. Um, a lot of times, and it's probably one of the first things that we'll be asking our guests this morning, why is a pneumonia one of the most uh, talked about illnesses across the country with its very, very shocking figures of under five uh, deaths, 160,000 plus uh, kids, you know, get infected and of course die annually, um, and which of course is, is staggering. So we would say good morning to Dr. Mark Boala. Thank you so much for joining us and for stepping in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Why is it important? I know we have commemoration to draw attention, but why is this one particularly important when it comes to young children? Yes, like you rightly said, pneumonia is uh, one of the diseases that have taken a um, lot of uh, children's life, uh, especially below the age of five, as well as uh, elderly people. And it is very important because for children, it is quite preventable at that age group and there are a lot of uh, preventable measures that one can take. Where are we with vaccination? Because that is one thing that, you know, keeps reoccurring. Uh, I know there's a lot of, you know, addition to our worries with the pandemic, we're distracted and attention is on it. Well, where are we with vaccinating our children against this um, ailment? Yeah, there are a set of vaccines that are recommended for children. Um, somehow in this tropical region, almost all are indicated, as, apart from some few like Japanese encephalitis that are not common here. But when you talk of measles, uh, the one for pneumonia, uh, whooping cough, BCG, so many of them. Now, of course, one factor is our priorities. Two is fund, and three is, there are a lot of things that are dependent on, especially in vaccine. You see supply chain, it has to be maintained at a certain temperature, it has to be stored at certain, in a certain environment. Even if those that don't require the cold chain, either frozen or in a refrigerated form where you have to keep it between two to eight degrees constant. If you store them for a long period of time, outside that temperature, they get bad. So even if you have some, it might not be effective. And again, the fact is that we all know it hasn't reached everywhere. There must be some commitment, uh, government commitment to say this is included and added as a standard vaccination for children before, below the age of two especially, because you need to get it early. There's a program. So once somebody, uh, a child is born, you have to start preparation and you give first at two months four months, six months, and then can be repeated after 12 months, between the 12 to 15 months. Some of the things that I saw um, that were really shocking, 162,000 kids uh, died in uh, 2018 uh, from pneumonia. That normally should be figures that should put everyone, um, you know, on their feet, you know, with regards to uh, pneumonia, but it still doesn't get the conversations that it deserves or that it should have compared to polio and measles and malaria and, and the likes? And I tell you, it's, it's likely to be more than that. This is what is recorded because so many people in the rural area don't even get to the hospital. And sometimes it's not actually diagnosed because there might be associated fever in some cases and one might tie it to malaria because in most people, most kids, you find out that once they have cough, they start treating, it might start with upper respiratory, then it gets complicated to pneumonia. So they'll start treating cough, common cold, and maybe malaria. So if it gets complicated and there is involvement in the lower respiratory tract, which is pneumonia, and it takes the person's life, it's likely going to be interpreted as malaria, but not pneumonia, you know. Okay. So but the primary complication that resulted to death is pneumonia. And if we're, t if we're talking now, because um, she just mentioned vaccine, vaccinations and um, the availability of that, um, there's also other factors that have made it difficult to address in Nigeria, I believe, uh, malnutrition, air pollution, and like you also said, um, uh, primary health care facilities. Uh, do you, does it seem like we're taking steps to address those factors? Uh, because no matter how much you vaccinate, if those factors are still uh, present, it, it almost doesn't change much. You, yeah, one need to 
take care of all the possible preventive measures, which, like you rightly said, poverty or malnutrition, which go hand in hand, is actually one factor. Um, so we need to face all, I would say maybe like four key points, which I can mention now. For instance, awareness. People need to be aware that this is what it is, right? So it's something that we may need to continue talking to especially um, pregnant women from antenatal stage to postnatal or related delivery, they need to be um, sensitized that air is a very vital um, aspect of human life. So, and it's easily, it's something that within four minutes, once you don't have adequate supply, no adequate supply of oxygen, exchange in the system, the person goes. So awareness, education, environmental factor, even some class categories of uh, malaria causative agents like the plasmodium malaria can also complicate pneumonia. Okay. Cold. Some people don't even have good housing system where they live in. Um, they get cold if the temperature change in rainy season or in dry season, depends on which part of the country the person lives. Um, you have the factor of malnutrition. Uh, if you have inadequacy of uh, minerals in the system, the micro elements like zinc can also uh, subject the person to possible exposure because if you are exposed to virus, different viral or bacterial infection um, can easily get that a part of the causative agent for uh, pneumonia. Then the hospital system, we need to improve it and extend to rural areas. Most of our rural areas don't even have simple basic community health centers. They don't have. If you go to deep into different parts of the state, there's no country, part of the country that is exempted. Even in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Sokoto, everywhere is the same. If you go deep in, you don't find the basic care facility or the expertise. It's hard. Then prevention in terms of uh, immunization. That's the third one I mentioned. And then Quick diagnosis. If it does happen, because even if you have everything in place, somebody can still get pneumonia. It has to be diagnosed quickly, fast, and oxygen must be available if the person requires okay. it. Okay, so talking about diagnosis, there are some misconceptions around a pneumonia. And there is some people who say it affects a particular, um, the vulnerable, the, the especially young and very old, you know. How true is this? And what other misconceptions are you aware of that surrounds the um, ailment? No, it, it's true. It's... Um it's, it's a standard uh, statistics. It's affect more of children below the age of five. In fact, most of the children uh, uh, illnesses, it's, it tends to be more grave in children below the age of five because sometimes in kids, it's not easy to quickly identify that they're ill. The symptoms have to be obvious. An adult can easily say, I feel pain, I'm weak. The child has to stop eating. The temperature has to be very high. You know, so and if you are not very observant, it might start simply by him not engaging in some play or not waking up early as usual or not crying with that uh, effort. So di early diagnosis and then their system is not as robust and built up like well, adults. Is it restricted to just young and elderly? No, we it's, have... it can affect people at different age group. But so we pay priority to people, children below the age of five and adults above 65. Right, but between the age of two, they also have few cases. They have some individuals that also recommend they take preventive measures such as the vaccine. For instance, people that are diabetic, um, prolonged smokers that also still smoking, if they will not quit, is recommended. People with heart failures, kidney diseases, chronic liver diseases, immunocompromised individuals, sickle cell disease, all these people are recommended that they take vaccination and also prevent pneumonia. Is, uh, is, is vaccination free? Um, that's what we're advocating, that it should be included in such list of the free vaccines given to children. So, so, so currently, um, parents have to pay to vaccinate their children? Yeah, and, and in fact, uh, sometimes it's not even readily available because it's not something that um, most pro sellers will want to or providers will want to store. Because okay. uh, it's difficult to keep vaccines, so it has to be an order. 
All right, before we wrap things up, I just shocking. need you to speak on some uh, misconception that you've come across over the years that has led to misdiagnosis of um, pneumonia among patients. Um, well, like I said, is the, we tend to also double into certain areas that's not ours. Even if a physician did not take very serious, our student is not so cautious, you might miss it. Um, sometime, because of lack of facilities, people go to pharmacies or chemists or talk to their friends, even relatives, or the child is sick, this temperature, or the child is coughing, or mix this, give this person this stuff. No one listened to the chest to the point of even saying, okay, do we need to do x-ray or ultrasound, anything uh, similar to just diagnose, even full blood count to give you an idea if uh, what level of uh, changes in the blood count. So all these factors. So the most important thing is, if the culture change to a larger extent, that if someone is ill, you go to the expert to at least help in diagnosis. That's for areas where they have uh, primary health care centers, uh, like you know, yours already mentioned, you know, yes. those things are lacking in a lot of places. Lastly, how, how are we um, celebrating World Pneumonia Day? I, I don't know if there's a lot to celebrate per se, but how do we, you know, take this day? Well, um, usually, of course, the Ministry of Health will come out with some uh, programs and speeches. Uh, but, but the key thing is, for instance, like we said, part of the team this year is to make oxygen available for everybody. Especially when you need, I mean, we all need oxygen, but when you need it in uh, oh, hospital care environment. Now, and that, that will be in a real issue now with the competition for those who have respiratory uh, worries with COVID-19. It's become so obvious it's that uh, it's a challenge. I mean, this is, these are things personally I've experienced in some um, government hospitals where you could spend two, three weeks ordering or look, requesting for oxygen, you won't get it, even in the pediatric unit. Wow. All right. Um, I guess uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, the most important thing is creating awareness and uh, letting people know that it is preventable. And as a parent, you must pay attention to these uh, issues. Thank you very much, Doctor, for coming on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me. All right. All right, we will um, be going on a short break, but it's important. You were talking about what we're doing to commemorate this day. In yeah. 47 countries, I think, um, 200 and I'm trying to get the correct figure now, 216 landmark will be lit up in blue as a way to draw attention to the importance of um, um, knowing about pneumonia knowing that it is preventable and taking the right measures to ensure that our young children don't die from things that we can prevent. So um, do help us spread the word. If you have uh, neighbors, uh, you, you know, who are, of course, um, expecting a child, do spread the word. Uh, yes. One thing that we, of course, have established this morning is that we lack a lot with regards to primary health care centers and um, oxygen and certain very, very basic things and the need for uh, free vaccination. Yes, that, that, that's, 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 that's all important. Let me, let me just say this quickly. A, a lot of persons uh, think it's far away from them. I lost a brother I never met. I celebrate his birthday posthumously every July 10. Pneumonia. Uh, yes, he died uh, from pneumonia. So it, don't think it can affect you. It can affect anybody. You don't want to be celebrating a dead brother that you never met <laughs> because he died uh, to pneumonia. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.